New homes up 37% year over year from last year. Up here in North Florida's Jacksonville area. Holy crap, is, is it over now? Is the, did the bubble burst and we passed it for new homes? Well, we're gonna check it out. We're gonna check out some more numbers about these new homes. Some things that is pretty interesting is how's the confidence for these new home builders. Also tonight, I've got a lot more I'm covering. These are the questions I'll be answering tonight. What is the current active listings? How many, how many sold in the last seven days? How many homes are under contract right now? How many new homes sold in the last seven days? What is the current active new home listings? How many active listings are foreclosures right now? How did people pay for these homes? What percentage of homes sold? Sold for under list, at list, and above list, and much, much more. You know, when I see these kind of numbers, I'm thinking like, you know, with the new homes, I says, do I got to change the name of the show? Hey, you know what? I'm Tom Kerr. And I'm the host of this show, Bubble Watch, and this is week 45 of season two. And right now we're going to get into the back end of my MLS account because I'm just a regular guy who happens to be a real estate agent up here in North Florida. And we're going to get into that account right now and I'm going to share it with you and look at these real numbers. So let's start off with those active listings. All right, here we are in the back end of the Northeast Florida's MLS, which we called the real MLS now. And we're gonna take a look at those active listings. And active listings are your current inventory. Up here, we've got 7,865 active listings. Next, we're gonna look at what sold in the last seven days. Now, this is total sales. 565, okay. Next, we're gonna take a look and see how many are active under contract. These are 1,426. Now they're active under contract with contingencies. What we want to see next is how many went into pending status in the last seven days. That number is 432. So when you add up what was went into pending and what is active under contract, that gives you the total under contract. All right, next we're gonna take a look and see how many people withdrew their listings in the last seven days. That number is 71. These are homes that are still active listings, they just can't be shown. Next we look at expired listings. How many expired in the last seven days? That number is 118. Those are homes that are no longer on the market, they did not sell. All right, now we wanna take a look and see out of those active, list well, out of the sold homes, how many were new construction homes that sold? That number is 133. Next, we're gonna take a look and out of the active listings, how many of them are new construction homes? That number is 1,957. Okay, next I take a look and see how many were in the foreclosure status. Okay, we've got under, under foreclosures, we got 282. These are active listings that are in foreclosure status. Next, I take a look and see how many are pre-foreclosure. That is 14. And the next thing we look is how many short sales are in the uh, active listings. That number is 23. Next thing I'm gonna take a look at, and we're gonna look at the uh, condos. And what we wanna see is how many condos are in the active listings. So out of the active listings, how many are condos? That number is 949. Next, we wanna look at and see how many of the solds are condos. So how many condos sold? That number is 33. All right, I take all that data and it's a lot more data than what I just went over here that comes out in an Excel spreadsheet and I export it. And so what happens is all that data comes out and then I clean it up and put it in an Excel spreadsheet that's easier to read and easier to follow and understand over the past weeks. Because I've been doing this since May of 2022 and I keep track of all that data that we've done just as I've done tonight on this show. Hey, while all that stuff's calculating and sorting out, Let's take a look and see how those interest rates did this past week. All right, here we look at the 30-year fix. Last week we ended up at 7.02. We broke that seven. It kept going into the sevens. And then all of a sudden we had a turnaround, okay? And we ended up at 6.96. Now let's take a look at those FHA rates because they generally are a little bit cheaper. 
Okay, here we are with the FHA rates, and last week we were at 6.5. They jumped a little bit, but then settled down to 6.46. Now let's take a look at those VA. Our VA was the same thing, about 6.52 last week. Um, jumped up some, followed the same trend, and then settled down at 6.47. All right, and then also, um, I think today, um, we've got word that the Fed says that they were going to hold the rates at where they are. Okay, so no increases, even though the inflation was ticking up. All right, next thing I look at is these charts that show us the price per square foot. They'll show us the inventory. To show us the median price and days on the market for Jacksonville, okay? So this is just the Jacksonville area, which is mostly Duval County, okay? But we do this every week to get a good comparison of what's going on in the Jacksonville metro area, all right? So let's look at those price per square foot because remember, for I think the last, what is it, 10 weeks, it hasn't changed. We're looking for that sign. Are things going down or are we going up? Let's find out. All right, here we are, and it's stayed flat again. So how many is this? A uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven weeks straight like this. All right, all right. Let's take a look and see what it, you know. When we look back a year, when you look back at the year, then you see how fast it went up and where it was down there. Um, you know. It was like in the bottom there and like around the June, you know, May and June of last year. And then, um, you know, we just kept climbing those stairs up, came down a little bit. Everyone thought this was it, but uh-oh, had different plans. All right, let's just take a quick look at the three-year chart. And there you can see how we've pretty much here just kind of stayed at the top here I mean that with those price per square foot all right let's take a look at that for sale inventory looking six months back and you can see that inventory it looks like it's starting to just change to go up a little bit a tick it's been bucking the trend of the whole area up here by going down over these last few weeks but looks like it may be changing a little bit let's take a look at the one year out and then you can see that how where we were really down there around in um, June of 2023, just like it went with that uh, square foot chart, and how it's been gradually climbing, 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 and then um, started dipping a little bit. All right, let's look at that median price. All right, this median price here was six months out. You take a look at it, we had this big drop where everything was falling down there, you know, in uh, the end of last year and then the beginning of this year. And uh, now all of a sudden, uh, it started creeping back up. These last couple of weeks, it's been creeping up. All right, is that going to give us an indication that that means that price per square foot is going to go back up? We'll see if we hit this back at a year back. And you see there where we had that height in October of 2023, that was, you know, I mean, the highest price. Then we took this slide down this year, and everyone said, this is it, this is it. How many times have I heard that? This is it, but not, we've started to turn the corner again. All right, we'll just take a look at that three year out, and so you can see what it looks like. All right, next, days on the market. All right, six months out, the days on the market is dropping. Okay, how fast will it drop, or is this a little drop, all right? But the fact it's dropping, you know, uh, that usually tells you that means there's multiple offers, um, or, um, you know, maybe people are just pricing them better and they're getting sucked up, okay? Um, let's take a look one year out. And you see where we had that really big drop down there where you know the days on the market was like really low at the end of last year in October and then it started rising okay and now we're we're starting to gradually go down it isn't a big slope see how we took a little baby step and let's take a look at the one at the three year and you can see and follow it out there um, back look at all the way back in 2021 you know where we were when there was low days on the market and again in 2022 and how it rose and fall. Okay, now I'm going to take you into those um, Excel spreadsheets that I told you about. We're going to take a look at this current week, and then we can compare it with the previous weeks. Also, I've got it set up where we can see year over year. Really easy to follow. Let's check it out. 
All right, here we go. As we see, we're in week 45 here of season two, and everything in the yellow columns are the current weeks that we've been working in. So you can see last week's there, week 44, the week before that, 43, and compare. Now, in the white column directly next to it is last year's week 45. And then the YOY tells the percentage of difference. So here we start off with those active listings, 7,865 where you can see last year we were at 5,677, so we have a 38% increase. And then you can see, follow these previous weeks, how it's been gradually going up. Homes that sold in the last seven days, 565, up 9.5% from last year. And look at that, um, the jump from uh, last week, okay? And we're even higher than the week before, so we're seeing that trend. All right, um, active under contract with contingencies, 1,426, and that's a jump, okay? Look at the previous weeks, okay? Next, we wanna see how many went pending. That's also a jump, 432, which brings us to a total under contract, 1,858, we're over that 1,800, okay? 13% higher than we were last, last year at this time, but I think this is the highest we've been, I mean, since I started the show. Um, okay, the number that are withdrawn, 71, same as last week, okay? Um, number that expired, 118, down a little bit from the week prior. And those new homes, here we are, new homes sold, 133. Look at that jump from 84 from there. And this is the amazing part. From this time last year, we're up 37%. But, okay, let's, let's take a look at this, all right? Is this a fluke? Is this something that's going to, you know, continue? Look at how it, you know, it seesawed, all right? Here we were, week 42, 179. Week 43 drops to 101. Week 44 drops even more to 84. And now we jump to 133. All right, um, new homes active. Uh, you know, um, 1,957, that is the inventory, so that is an increase of 15%. Something that I found interesting is about the new home builders, and what I'm talking about are the national builders, the ones like, you know, uh, D.R. Horton, KB Homes, Toll Brothers, that are all over the country. Check this out. All right, this is the this is the stock for these companies. All right, here we're looking at Toll Brothers. All right, check it out. We're looking one year back. You know the 52 weeks. Look at it right now. It's at its all time high in 52 weeks. Okay, you see how they've been gradually going up. All right, let's take a look at. Let's see, that's Toll Brothers. So the next one we'll look at. We look at Pulte here, and they are. I mean, they are also at their 52-week high. Check it out. All right, next let's take a look at DR Horton, okay? They also are at their 52-week high. And next we'll look at KB Homes. And KB Homes looks like they're at their 52-week high. Looks like, uh, like uh, last week there it was um, a little bit about the same there. Um, when we when we spread it out let's look at three there you can see like it it might be just a little hair under from where it was there where it was like uh like there went at 70 but pretty much it's at its one year high you know with all things considered all right i mean you know i saw an interview with like the ceo of pulte homes and uh he seems satisfied with where the new construction's going um, from this point on for 2024. Um, so um, we're going to take a look at some other numbers here at, with new homes also um, that I added something. We'll see for just this week to, to kind of compare. All right, let's go back to that chart and check out and see what those condos did. Well, before I get to the condos right here in the orange, I didn't cover that. This is the percentage of homes sold that are new. So almost a one-fourth of the homes sold were new homes this last week. You can see that's up from the 18 before and the 18 to the week before that. All right, now let's take a look at those condos. 
And here we go, 949 are active, the same as last week. It didn't change, but what did change is the amount sold, 33 sold, so that the percentage of actives that are condos is 12%, you know, 12.07%. So a little bit down from last week. And as I was telling you, everyone here, there's a lot of new people to the show every week. So this here, when I said, as you can see, this chart, my Excel spreadsheet, I've been doing this, see, all this time. Go all the way back. There we go, May of 2022. Just for grins, what was it back then, okay? That's what our at, when I first started this, okay? The solds were about the same, all right? Um, under contract, 1700s, you know? Uh, it was before I did the new homes. I didn't do them until a couple weeks later. I um, started adding them, but as you can see this chart, I keep track of this all the way back, okay? All right, let's take a look. How did people pay for these homes? All right, 27% paid cash, 38% conventional mortgage, 17% FHA, 15% VA, and other jumped up to 3% this week. All right, let's look at the foreclosures. 282 for the foreclosures, 14 pre-foreclosures, 23 short sales, total of 319. So as we see, it continues to climb. However, the climb has slowed down a bit from what we've been watching here these last last you know last couple of months, basically. All right, next chart. Take a look at this. Homes that sold for five hundred thousand and above, the percentage that's twenty four percent. So one fourth of all the homes sold sold for a half a million dollars. Don't let that five hundred k fool you. That's half a million. All right, homes that sold under list seventy two percent. Homes that sold at list sixteen. Homes that sold above list twelve. And no, I did not just copy and paste. These were came from the actual numbers. Even though it changed in the last all three weeks. I haven't had that happen. Um, I don't know. Maybe I should play somehow work these numbers into a, to the lottery somehow. Um, <laughs> that's spooky. All right. The next thing I take a look at is we take a look here at at the homes that sold in these different price categories, the percentage. So in the 500s and above, okay, 500 and above. 24% like we showed. Homes that were in the 400s, okay? 14% of all of the new of the homes all homes sold, not new. All homes sold was 14%. 27 were in the 300s. That's our sweet spot right now. In the 200 range, 23% and those that sold below 200,000, 12%. Now, something that I did that I just wanted to play with. I was curious as to how because you know, all the new homes you see, I get so many emails about homes that are sold, 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 that are 600, 700, a million dollars. I wondered what they were when they break down by these price ranges. So what I did, as you can see here, the new homes, there was 133 homes sold, and this is how it broke down. 38 of them were 500,000 and above. Nine new homes were in the 400,000 range. 59 in the 300 range, 26 in the 200, and actually one was below 200. Okay, those that you're going to see in the 200s, those are generally going to probably be like uh, like Dr. Horton um, townhomes, um, you know, in that price range. Okay, and then those 300s, you're going to get Dr. Hortons, you're going to get some KB homes also in there. Um, a, a lot. That doesn't mean you can't get other homes in that, that range. I'm just saying that they do take up a lot of, of that market share. All right, let's look at the new construction numbers. 66% sold under list. That's a jump from last week. Homes that sold at list dropped to 15% from last week, although, you know, on par with, with a few other weeks. 19% of the homes sold above list, and that stayed pretty strong here now for three weeks. All right, next thing I do is what is called MLS Advantage. And for all of you that are regulars to the show, you already know what I'm about to say. But because we got so many new people coming on every week, you know, I cover it, is that MLS Advantage, the 
all these stats that I was just showing you are in the real MLS, which is Northeast Florida's MLS, okay, which is the largest MLS board up here in this Jacksonville metro area. And in Jacksonville metro area, it have like about nine counties, okay, up in this area. Now, a lot of these other counties have their own little individual boards, okay, which are a lot smaller, but they cross sell. They'll come and sell over into this area in these other counties, and I also, you know, sell in those other areas too. So to get a better idea of the total sales for the whole nine county area, it, I, I run the numbers in MLS, what this is called MLS Advantage, and then I'll break it down by counties and so you can see where the sales were in the last weeks and compare them. All right, so let's go to the MLS Advantage and see what happened. Okay, here we are in the MLS Advantage. And then here's the nine counties we'll be looking at. Baker, Union, Bradford, Clay, Nassau, Duval, St. John's, Flagler, and Putnam. Okay, we're going to hit the search button right here and see where it takes us. 777 properties sold. Okay, let's put them into the chart. Look in the chart here, and we've got it broken down by counties. Baker, four, uh, same as last week. Union, zip like last week. Bradford, four times what they did last week. Uh, it came in at four. Clay County came up to 81. Nassau saw a drop, okay? While uh, others went up, Nassau County dropped from 93 to 73. Duval County, 271. 199 for St. John's. 119 for Flagler. 26 for Putnam County. Okay, that St. John's, you've got your St. Augustine, Rivertown, Nocatee, um, Flagler, you've got the most common there is uh, the Palm Coast area, which does a lot. Now, um, also, again, for the folks that are new, this, this chart, these, uh, this Excel spreadsheet, as I showed you, um, I do have it available for download. I have a weekly newsletter that comes out every Tuesday. The link to this exact same Excel spreadsheet that I use here on the show is in that newsletter. So all you have to do if you'd like to subscribe to that is just send me an email at this email below and I'll get you on the list for that. Also included in that newsletter is information um, also tied with the condo show that's on um, on Monday nights and then also the MLS sheets for the Houses of the Week and below and above. Um, you can uh, download that from there also. All right, we're going to about get to here the question of the week. And these are questions I get um, from customers and when they ask me, and then I write it down, and I bring it on the show because I figure if they ask, then someone else wants to know the, the answer also. And speaking of customers, if you would like to be one of my customers and would like to use me or members of my team to help you buy or sell a house up here in Northeast Florida, you know, give us a call, a text at this number, or shoot an email here, and then I'll meet up with you in person and we'll go over, you know, I go over a good buyer's consultation and also a seller's consultation presentation of what we do for you to sell your house. All right, the question of the week. This comes from a buyer wanting to know, can they, after they've signed the contract, okay, we're under contract, they've given their deposit, you know, and all this and that, we're, we're raring to go, getting ready to do the inspection and everything, can they switch lenders in the middle of the contract? The answer is yes. Yes, you can. Um, the contract doesn't say who the lender is, okay? You know what it is. It just tells what type of loan you're getting, whether you're getting a VA loan, an FHA loan, whether it's a cash deal, um, is it a conventional loan or a USDA loan, okay? So you can switch lenders. Now, this is the thing you got to be careful of. Okay, because most contracts default to about 30 days for loan approval. Okay, if your loan is denied within that 30 days, you get your deposit back. If it goes after the 30 days, you may forfeit your deposit if you do not get an extension signed by the seller. The seller does not have to sign an extension, okay? Um, generally, they do. They're already into it a month, and if you need a week or two, something happens. And most sellers are pretty good about things happening like this because this does happen. Um, they find out that all of a sudden they get a better deal from another lender. Better rate can mean like another 100 or 200 a month difference or or the um, fees. Maybe they got better fees so they want to switch lenders. 
Now, a lot of times, we'll get lenders will really ramp it up when they're the one that just got switched to to try to make this happen as fast as possible, but you can't. Now, on the flip side of that, like what I was talking about, can you switch from FHA to conventional or conventional to FHA? Yes, you can, but that is a change in the contract, okay? And you do have to have uh, an amendment for the seller to sign off on that, which generally they do um, because if, you know, they, you know, especially if you're going FHA to conventional, the seller would rather have that, okay? Um, on the flip side, if you're going conventional, the FHA where you couldn't finance conventional, but you can't FHA, then the seller's looking at it like, well, you know, at least, you know, we can still get a deal. You know, we can still finance. The only time you might have a problem with this is if there are multiple offers or there are backup offers, and a backup offer is better than what you've got and this is the seller's way out because you, you switched and you can't you can't meet meet the timelines also and something like that so you gotta be careful of that all right let's do the houses of the week this is where i go over a house that that sold for below list price and a house that sold above list price let's check them out Okay, here we're going to start off with the house that sold below list price. This one here, a 2006, 2,240 square foot in Clay County. Okay, as you can see in the Middleburg area. Four bedroom, two bath. All right, let's take a look at the history. All right, in the history here, you see where they started off $450,000. Okay, started dropping the price after a month. Okay, whittled it down. All right, got it. Looks like it, it was under contract fill out where it says back on the market here. Um, they had dropped it $399.9. Um, was on the market 187 days and they sold it for $390,000. Okay, what did they buy it for? All right, they bought it for $301,000 back in just a year ago. Okay, all right, April of 2023. Now, this is a company that bought this house, so I'm guessing they bought it to flip, and that's why they thought they were going to get 450 because this house here, they did put on a uh, new roof, and they did put in one of those split air systems in one of these other rooms, and they did other upgrades, they said. So they probably improved it, definitely, um, over what it was and thought that it was worth that extra 150 who knows, maybe they put 50 into it and got So let's see what their appreciation was on this short time for what they ended up selling it for. All right, here we are. They had it for less than a year and the appreciation was 32%. So they still did okay um, based on probably what they put into it. Like I said, they may have put like 50,000. So they did make something. Uh, if that, I mean, you figure, okay, the... You know, the AC maybe 10, the roof maybe like 25, 35, if whatever else they did. I don't know. They don't tell everything they did. So at least they didn't, they didn't take a loss, it didn't look like. Okay? All right, next we're going to look at the house that sold above list price. A 2024, yes, it is a new home. Okay, 3,285 3, 3, square feet, a big house. St. John's County, all right, five bedroom, four bath monster, okay? Let's take a look at the um, hist history on that. Here we see they started off at $750,000, all right? Also looks like that it was under contract too, and then it fell through, okay? This is back on the market now. This house here was on the market 103 days, okay, went on the market you know, you know, um, September of last year. Um, and I don't know at what's, what point in the construction it was then, because I know they did say that it was to be completed in March of this year. Um, so it probably just started. They poured the foundation and they put it on the market. So somebody came and these people here, I mean, these could have been the ones... Uh, I mean, uh, maybe they put some upgrades or something into it and why the price went up because 
these people here ended up paying eight hundred and four thousand five eighty nine um, when the list wear was 750 okay well because it's a new house we won't be doing the appreciation calculator or of course what they paid for it so as you can see man everything's all over the place so what do you do right now as a buyer okay is now a good time to buy if you feel that things are going to go up and it's just things are going to get further out of reach for you um, and that rates may come down or something um, you know you got to make that decision you know I just show you the numbers every week I'm not a fortune teller okay but if you think that everything's going to bottom out we're going back to 2019 or 2008 to be worse and you're going to hold off, well, that's a decision. But if you do that and hold off, do you miss the train? Okay, does it take off? Um, or does the train go off the tracks, all right? You know, that's something you got to feel. That's why I give you these numbers every week to help you, you know, try to piece it all together to see. And as you see, things are all over the place. Sometimes you can get some really good deals out there right now, and sometimes you can't. You just got to pay. What they want depends on where the house is and what it is, you know. So, you know, but when you're ready to look, especially new homes, if you're looking at new homes, even thinking about it, definitely call me. Do not call the builder before. Hey, and until I meet you out there at one of these homes, I'm out of here.